good day everyone. For this day, we'll continue natin yung discussion with regard to the health section of our module. So we've done or we've already discussed the health information as I've had that before. So for this day, there are three main topics that I will discuss which is related to the health information. So what are those kinds of topics? Later on, you will know, and this might help you as a consumer into different products. So speaking of products, that will serve as our first topic. For this day, the health products define as any kind of food, cosmetics, devices, vaccines, etc. that can be purchased from various places. To be particular, this kind of things are most essential for the consumers. Every now and then, we need this kind of products. Basic need natin ang food as a human being. So therefore, it is a form of health products that needed by a person. So lahat tayo nangangailangan ng mga produkto na nakikita natin in terms of market, in terms of drugstore, in terms of kahit saan. So dito... Hindi mabubuhay ang tao kung wala yung mga products na to because that is very essential para mag-survive ang isang tao. Especially dun sa food, sa the, um, vaccines, or sa mga gamot na tinetik natin once na may sakit tayo, and other cosmetics, devices, and so on and so forth. So therefore, lahat tayo nagamit nito, kaya dapat aware din tayo kung ano yung maging epekto ng paggamit natin ng mga produktong ito. Kasi hindi lahat ng produkto is legit or proven and tested ng mga agency here in the Philippines. So, bakit ko nabanggit yung agency? Kasi, in terms of products, dapat meron silang mga license to operate na ibenta yung products nila in terms of different places. So, hindi sila pwede agad-agad magtinda ng produkto if naka-invento sila ng produktong gusto nila. So, therefore, kukuha sila ng lisensya sa iba't ibang agencies. At ano-ano yung agencies na yon One agency that is being monitored for the health product is the Department of Health or DOH. So, ang DOH, sila ang liable for the vaccines, for the drugs, kung effective ba yung drugs or hindi. So, kinakailangan nilang ma-approve yung product from the DOH para masabing legit or effective yung produktong ibinebenta ng isang company. Kasi, if hindi yun effective at hindi dumaan sa proseso, ng DOH or hindi na test ng DOH, there's a possibility na magkaroon ng problema yung produktong ibinibenta nila sa market. Kasi nga, hindi dumaan sa tamang procedure, which is testing. DOH kasi ang nag-test ng mga products kung effective ba at safe bang gamitin ng mga tao or consumers yung product na ibinibenta sa market. Aside from DOH, the second agency is the DTI or Department of Trade and Industry. They are the agency na nagmo-monitor in terms of trade, selling and trading of products. So dapat kukuha din ng lisensya na pwedeng i-operate, na pwedeng ibenta sa publiko yung produkto nila, na pwedeng gamitin, na safe gamitin. So those are the two agency na pwedeng kumuha or mag magsabi na effective yung product na ibinebenta sa market. And last is the FDA or Food and Drugs Administration. So therefore, dito din sila, nakafocus din sila sa safety and reliability ng products kung effective ba yung mga produkto na ibebenta sa market. So therefore, those are the agencies na liable kung effective yung product or hindi. So, bago tayo bumili ng product, dapat alamin natin kung yung product is approved ba ng mga agency na to para din makasigurado tayo doon sa produktong bibilin natin. So, beware of the products that you 
that you're buying into the market. Kasi hindi lahat yan is may permit. Especially sa mga changge, especially sa mga tabi-tabi, sometimes or most of the time, the products that they sell is not approved by this agency. So beware of that. So that is health product. Aside from health products, we also have this kind of health services. Health services stated or defined as programs that aims to appraise the health condition. So what do we mean by this one? Once we said programs or it services, those are the things na ginagawa sa isang tao para ma-monitor yung health condition niya. Example, may sakit ka. So therefore, you need to have or you need to undergo for a checkup. So that is services. So ano ba yung ginagawa pag chine-check up tayo? Kinukuha nan tayo ng dugo or CBC or complete blood count. Yun yung tawag natin doon. It is a form of services. It is a form of test. So therefore, ayon tinitingnan kung saan tayo may problema, kung may problema ba yung dugo natin, kung mataas ba yung yung white blood cell natin, red blood cell, kung may, may diseases ba, may pathogens, may different kinds of bacteria dun sa dugo natin. Aside from that, urinalysis, yung kinukuhanan tayo ng ihi to test kung okay ba yung kidney natin. So aside from that is yung x-ray. Those are the services. Lahat ng ginagawa sa ating test, lahat ng ginagawa sa katawan natin, those are the services. So therefore, bakit nila ginagawa yon? The main objective of the health services is to monitor. If alam ng pasyente or alam ng individual na siya ay may abnormality sa katawan niya, pwede niyang malunasan, pwede niyang mabigyan ng paraan, at pwede niyang masupil or mahinto yung abnormality doon sa katawan niya. That is the main purpose of health services. And of course, care. Those are the services na ibinibigay lalo na kapag nakakonfine ang isang pasyente. Care is one of the service that that given by the health professionals. So that is health services. As I mentioned a while ago, health professional once we talk about health professional, these are the individual who are licensed to practice medicine. So, anong ibig sabihin nito? They have the knowledge, they have the experience, they have the authority to some or to, to get and to practice medicine. So, therefore, dito, an example nito is yung mga doctors, nurses, med techs, uh, so on and so forth. So, yung mga pangkaraniwang nakikita natin sa hospitals. They are the individual na pwedeng magbigay din sa atin ng information kung ano ba yung condition ng katawan natin. They are the one also na pwedeng magbigay sa atin kung anong product yung applicable para sa atin. And they, they are the one na nagbibigay ng services to monitor the health condition of a particular individual. So that is health professional. Most of the health professionals needs to have a license, especially the doctors, para magkaroon sila or para makapag-perform sila ng operation. So that is the health professionals. Of course, there's a lot of health professionals out there and they have specialization. Once we said specialization, they have this kind of forte. So, naka-base or naka-focus sila sa isang part ng katawan or sa isang disease or sa isang situation. So, later on, we will discuss that one. So, again, that is health professional, which are the individuals who are licensed to practice medicine. For this slides, I have this kind of parts ng katawan natin because that will serve as the specialization of the different doctors out there. So therefore, 
not all of the doctors can treat you unless they specialize into a certain part. But then again, they can help you as an individual. But definitely, they had this kind of specialization na tinatawag. So it means they have this kind of focus in terms of diseases. So let's discuss this one. First doctor that we're going to discuss for this kind of specialization is this one, the heart. The doctors who specialize into the heart is known as the cardiologists. Once we said cardiologists, they are specialized doctor for the heart. It means they can practice heart transplant. So mostly sila yung specialized doctor for heart failures. And sometimes kung may baradong ugat sa puso natin or part ng puso natin. So mostly dito ang pasyente nila mostly is yung may mga high blood pressure kasi related yun sa puso. Or affected sometimes ang puso if high blood ang isang tao. So therefore, mostly then sila yung nagtatransplant ng heart. Once we said transplant, it, it means papalitan yung puso ng isang tao na ang kapalit ay puso mula sa ibang tao. Sometimes merong mga ganun kasi kapag namamatay yung tao, they have this kind of waiver na willing silang i-donate yung puso nila sa ibang tao. And ayon kapag itatransplant na yon cardiologist yung mga nag-oopera nun or nag-perform ng operation. Or sometimes yung bypassing na tinatawag in terms of operation. So those are the different kind of practices na ginagawa ng cardiologist. So again, that doctor is specialized for the heart. Pero hindi sila specialized for the heart broken people, especially with the teenagers. So again, diseases lang ang ginagamot nila. So that is cardiologist. Aside from the cardiologist, which serve as these doctors for the heart, we also have doctors for the brain. So ang tawag natin dun ay neurologist. Once we said neurologist, they are a specialized doctor for the brain. So ano ba yung mga, gam uh, mga sakit na pwede nilang gamutin? Pwede mag-opera mag sila sa utak if ever na nagkaroon sila ng uh, brain tumor. Pwede din mga brain fracture or yung, yung basag sa ulo or sa bungo, something like that. So they are specialized for this kind of operation nakafocus sila mostly sa brain. As we all know, the brain or the central nervous system is the one that control our emotion, action, so on and so forth. So therefore, neurologist is one of the best doctor for this kind of diseases. Again, that is neurologist. One of the most common doctors nowadays is these are the doctors who specialize for child. So, ang tawag natin doon is pediatrician. So, di sila naka-focus sila sa mga bata kasi di ba mostly ang mga bata malapit din sa sakit because their body is not yet fully developed. So therefore, kaya mas lapitin sila sa sakit and pediatrician is yung the one na nag-ooperate or nagmo-monitor ng mga condition ng bata. So though definitely the purpose of pediatrician is to help those children who's ill and to help them to survive for this community. So again, pediatrician are the doctors who specialize for children because children are very vulnerable in terms of diseases. Once we said vulnerable, prone sila sa diseases, mabilis silang dapuan ng sakit. So that is pediatrician. Aside from pediatrician, these are the doctors who specialize in female reproductive system. 
So once we said female reproductive system, we talk about gynecologists. So definitely they are the doctors that can have a certain specialization in terms of fertility of the female. So pwede silang makatulong if sometimes medyo nahihirapang magbuntes or merong problema sa kanilang reproductive system, which is the female reproductive system. Again, gynecologist is only for female reproductive system. So, yon Sila yung nag tumutulong dun sa mga babaeng gustong magkaanak or sometimes may problema in terms of reproductive system. Cervical cancer, so on and so forth. Pwede din silang makatulong because they, they can contribute information. So that is gynecologist. Next doctor that we're going to discuss is the pulmonologist. Once we said pulmonologist, those are the doctors who specialize for respiratory system. Let's define first what is the purpose of respiratory system. The main function of respiratory system is to circulate and operate oxygen into our body. It supplies oxygen dun sa heart and of course sila din yun magkatuwang para magkaroon ng oxygen sa katawan natin. So, ano yung mga possible sa na sakit dito sa respiratory system? So, dito papasok ang asthma, ang lung cancer, shortness of breathing, so on and so forth. So, ayun yung mga sakit na pwedeng gamutin ng pulmonologist or pwedeng i-monitor ng pulmonologist. Especially sa mga may TB or tuberculosis and lung cancer kasi sometimes or most of the time based on the study kaya nagkakaroon ng tuberculosis and lung cancer ang isang tao because they fonts of smoke. So, naninigarilyo or nakakalanghap ng secondhand smoke masama yun sa katawan natin. So, because of carbon monoxide. So therefore, hindi ka hindi kailangan ng katawan natin yung carbon monoxide which is na po-produce yon ng mga sinabi kong sigarilyo and sometimes vehicle. So pwedeng maka-apekto yung mga yon in terms of our respiratory system. And because nakaka-apekto yung mga yon, ang pwedeng tumulong sa atin is the pulmonologist who can monitor the health condition of our respiratory system. So that is pulmonologist. doctor that we're going to discuss is this doctor who are specialized for the skin and that is what we call dermatologists. This kind of doctors are very relevant in terms of skin diseases like eczema, like skin asthma, like galis, buni, hadhad, alipunga, fungi, so on and so forth. So, a certain trivia that our body, the largest organ into our body is the skin. So definitely, lahat yan, it covers skin. So sila yung gumagamot dun sa mga may sakit na minention ko kanina. And they can formulate different medicine like ointment, lotion, so on and so forth, para lang makatulong dun sa mga skin allergies or skin diseases natin. That is the dermatologist. The next doctor that we're going to discuss is the doctors who specialize into the eyes. And what we call that one is ophthalmologist. So once we said ophthalmologist, they are the doctors who treat patients with cataract, with eye problem, especially those people na mataas yung grado ng mata. Kasi pwedeng maaalis yung taas ng grado ng mata. Dadaan tayo sa LASIK operation. So, inaalis yung grado ng mata ng isang tao. Bakit ba lumalabo ang mata ng isang tao? Siyempre, meron tayong mga ginagawa dahil 
lumalabo yung mata natin. First is mostly sa radiation from the TV, computers, laptops, cell phones, especially for the teenagers. Babad na babad sa last in terms of technology. So therefore, those radiations can affect the eyes of the people. So, ophthalmologist is one of the doctor who can help us once na nagsasuffer tayo in terms of this diseases. One best example of ophthalmologist that I know is Dr. Jose Rizal. Dr. Jose Rizal is our national hero who studied this kind of field para gamutin yung kanyang nanay. Kasi nga, may katarata yung kanyang nanay during that time. So, he wants to cure the cataract of his mother. So, again, that is ophthalmologist. The doctors who specialize for the eyes. The next doctor is the one that specializes for digestive system. So once we said digestive system, that is the part of our body who helps to minimize and to dissolve the different food that we eat. So sila yung taga tunaw nun. So therefore, sometimes lalo na sa mga mahilig Gumalaw agad after nilang kumain, hindi maganda yon. So, ang tawag natin dun sa mga doctors na pwede makatulong sa atin in terms of our digestive system is gastroenterologist. So, pwede sila mag-operate ng mga colon cancer, ng mga appendicitis, so on and so forth. So, that is gastroenterologist. So, digestive system is the system that helps us to dissolve the food that we eat. So therefore, wag tayo agad-agad kikilos or sometimes na magkaroon ng heavy activity pagkatapos natin kumain because it might disturb the digestive system. The next doctor is the urologist. These are the doctors who specialize for urinary tract or to be specific, yung sakit sa bato. So therefore, pwede silang makagamot or makamonitor ng mga sakit in terms of UTI or urinary, urinary tract infection, lalo na yun sa mga hirap umihi. Bakit ba tayo nagkakaroon ng mga urinary tract infection? Sometimes because of the food that we eat, especially kapag mga maalat at matatabang pagkain. Kapag yan, nagsama-sama yung taba or yung sebo at yung alat, pwede yung maging kidney stone or stone to be particular. So kaya minsan nagkakaroon tayo ng mga bato-bato sa loob ng katawan natin. So beware of what you eat and especially beware na... Laging uminom tayo ng tubig para ma-replenish yung urinary tract natin. And buko or coconut juice is one of the best example para ma-treat yung mga urinary tract infection natin. So again, eight glass of water a day is good for our kidney. So that is the main purpose of urologists to monitor the tract infection, urinary tract infection into our body. We're going to discuss is what we call the doctors who specialize for the elderly. If we have pediatrician for children, of course we also have doctors for the elderly. And that is what we call geriatrician. Once we said geriatrician, mostly sila yung nandoon sa mga home for the agent or yun sa mga bahay ng mga matatanda na hindi na kayang alagaan ng kanika nilang mga pamilya. So definitely kasi ang mga matatanda or elderly mostly prone din sila sa diseases kasi nga humihina ng humihina yung kanilang immune system and their body functions. So therefore, the health condition of these 
individual must be monitored. At ang tumutulong sa kanila is the geriatrician to stabilize the health condition ng mga matatanda. So that is geriatrician. The doctors who specialize for the elderly. So again, those are the different doctors who's having specialization in the field of medicine. So I hope you've learned a lot and have a good day ahead.